I moved to New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. In the 90s, do you understand what that's like? 13, what were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. Yeah. Smalls was there, Lil' Kim, Craig Mack, Faith Evans, Joe C, Mary okay? J. Blosh. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? Usher finally broke his silence on the federal authorities' raid on Diddy's house. The federal authorities raided properties belonging to Sean Diddy Combs earlier this week amidst sex trafficking allegations, raising significant scrutiny. Old interviews of Usher detailing very curious things he witnessed while residing at Combs' New York mansion have resurfaced, adding to the intrigue. The prosecutor who successfully convicted R&B star R. Kelly for sex trafficking has also chimed in, suggesting Combs should be very concerned about the raids. Investigators, led by the Department of Homeland Security, executed search warrants at Combs properties in Miami and the Homby Hills suburb of Los Angeles. These searches are believed to be linked to a federal sex trafficking investigation originating from New York. Combs has faced multiple lawsuits alleging sexual assault and trafficking in recent months, all of which he vehemently denies. There is a lot of reaction to the simultaneous raids on homes in Florida and California linked to music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. As news of the raid on Sean Diddy Combs' property spread across social media, numerous celebrities chimed in, sharing their thoughts on the matter. Additionally, the internet community did what it does best, resurfacing old interviews of various celebrities discussing Combs. This flurry of activity further fueled speculation and discussion surrounding the ongoing situation involving the rap mogul. Usher's revelation about his experience living in Sean Diddy Combs' New York apartment for a year, known as Flavor Camp, after signing a record deal with L.A. Reid, has stirred significant interest. Yeah. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you York over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. He described witnessing very curious things taking place during his time there. The burn hitmaker admitted to Howard Stern that he was exposed to a lifestyle he found difficult to comprehend, saying, I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was pretty wild. <laughs> and it was, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. Usher recounted late night partying as a common occurrence during his stay. When asked if he would ever consider sending his children to Puffy Camp, he vehemently replied, hell no. Now, would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> hell no. <laughs> One interview that has resurfaced amidst the current scrutiny is Usher's 2016 appearance on The Howard Stern Show. During the interview, Usher shared insights into his experience living with Sean Diddy Combs, also known as Puff Daddy Puffy and Brother Love, for a year when he was just 13 years old. Usher's revelation shed light on a world characterized by hedonism and questionable sexual practices. As this interview gains traction, Newsweek reached out to a spokesperson for Usher for comment on Thursday. Combs, renowned for nurturing young talent like Usher, played a significant role in shaping the singer's formative years. In a 2004 interview with Rolling Stone, Usher elaborated on Combs' influence, stating that the music tycoon introduced him to a totally different set of sex, specifically. He continued, emphasizing the prevalence of sexual activities within the industry, recalling instances of stumbling upon individuals engaging in sexual acts or witnessing group encounters. Usher's candid revelations provide a glimpse into the realities of the entertainment world, raising further questions amidst the ongoing scrutiny surrounding Combs and his properties. A report provided insights from a defense perspective regarding the search warrants executed on Sean Diddy Combs' properties, emphasizing the gravity of the situation. It is concerning. It means that based on a sworn affidavit setting forth specific evidence and information, two separate federal judges found that there was probable cause to believe that at least one federal crime and possibly more has been committed and that evidence of that crime will be found in the property searched. Reports also clarified that the standard of probable cause required for obtaining search warrants is the same standard prosecutors need to meet for obtaining arrest warrants and pursuing criminal charges. She highlighted the significance of the government's ability to obtain these search warrants, indicating that they have already gathered sufficient evidence to meet the arrest standard for someone. Moreover, it emphasized that 
since the properties belong to Mr. Combs, it is reasonable to assume that the government has probable cause to believe he committed at least one federal crime. This assertion underscores the seriousness of the allegations and the potential legal implications for Combs. News reporters reached out to Combs' attorney for comment on the developments surrounding the raids on Friday. Meanwhile, rapper 50 Cent shared his thoughts on the raids on social media, adding a layer of controversy to the situation. The ongoing feud between 50 Cent and Combs, dating back to 2007, when 50 Cent insinuated Combs' involvement in the killing of hip-hop legend, the notorious Big, resurfaced. 50 Cent, whose real name is Curtis Jackson III, took to social media mocking Combs with the comment, now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. He accompanied his post with screenshots of news coverage of the Los Angeles raid. This social media commentary from 50 Cent adds further attention and speculation to the unfolding events surrounding Combs and the raids on his properties. Homeland Security Investigations released a statement confirming their involvement in the law enforcement actions, stating that they were part of an ongoing investigation and involved assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and local law enforcement partners. In response to the raids and subsequent media coverage, Sean Diddy Combs' attorney, Aaron Dyer, provided a statement to Newsweek via email on Tuesday. Dyer expressed concerns about the manner in which the raids were conducted, particularly the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities and the treatment of Combs' children and employees. Dyer clarified that while Combs was not detained, he cooperated with the authorities. Dyer characterized the raids as an unprecedented ambush and criticized the coordinated media presence, which he believes contributed to a premature rush to judgment against Combs. He described the situation as a witch hunt based on what he deemed to be meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. Uh, furthermore, Dyer emphasized that there have been no findings of criminal or civil liability regarding the allegations against Combs. He asserted Combs' innocence and affirmed his commitment to fighting to clear his name. In recent months, music producer Sean Diddy Combs has found himself entangled in multiple legal battles, facing allegations of sexual assault and trafficking. One such lawsuit was filed in February by music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, who accuses Combs of coercing him into soliciting prostitutes and then pressuring him to engage in sexual activity with them. Jones alleges that he was sexually harassed, drugged, and threatened by Combs over the course of more than a year. Seeking $30 million in damages, Jones claims these actions occurred while he worked on Combs' album, The Love Album, Off the Grid. Combs' attorney, Sean Hawley, has vehemently denied these allegations, asserting that they possess overwhelming, indisputable proof that Jones' claims are false. Furthermore, in 2023, Three separate lawsuits alleging sexual assault were filed against Combs under the New York Adult Survivors Act, which had a deadline of November 23rd. One of these lawsuits was brought forth by a woman named Joy Dickerson Neal in November. She accused Combs of drugging and sexually assaulting her, alleging that he filmed the incident and shared the footage with others, an act described as revenge porn. This lawsuit emerged shortly after Combs settled a separate suit with Cassie Ventura, who had accused him of rape, sex trafficking, and physical abuse spanning nearly a decade. In December, Sean Diddy Combs faced yet another lawsuit, this time from a woman identified as Jane Doe, alleging that he trafficked and sexually abused. anonymous accusers seeking financial gain. The attorney criticized the exploitation of the New York Adult Survivors Act, suggesting that it was being misused by individuals seeking to capitalize on Combs' reputation. Following the raids on Monday, attorney Douglas Wigdor, who represents both Cassie